1450 and triple w wake up dancing.com hard roman in the well th we're not even in the dungeons of the congress theater right now we are actually in the main floor of the congress theater with tim's been in Schomer. tim how are you i feel good thank you for asking so <laughs> here we go freestyle music is it the cause of you losing your hair or the oh. cause or the cause of you staying so young it, that's what I, I, I'm going to say. This uh, th it's a little bit of both, and I'm not losing my hair. I'm just cutting it. It's, I'm camouflaging it. It's turning gray and falling out. So that's the that's the move, camouflage. Tell me about this thing called freestyle music. I mean, we we both have been promoting the artist and the music for so many years, and when we first met up, probably in the late '80s or so. Who would have thought 20-some years later we'd be at the Congress <laughs> Theater with, with the acts, with the original acts doing these original songs that in some cases are 25 years old. Right, and they know us, and that's great. Uh, you know what, it, it's crazy. I, first of all, I love the funky beats. That's that's the whole thing for the, with the freestyle thing. But at, at the time when I started playing freestyle, um, on the radio, you know, I was up against Julian and Bad Boy Bill and trying to make a name for myself because those guys were, you know, true veterans. And uh, what I wanted to do was, you know, stand out a little bit more and, and, and delve more into the freestyle uh, music. And that's, you know, that's really how I kind of niched myself in there, you know, because I, I know Julian and Bill went back and forth and they kind of played a lot of this you know, a lot of similar music you know back in the day so so why do you think it is that freestyle ended up being more of a niche genre of music rather than being widespread because it came it went and it made its impact and there are people that grew up with freestyle that are still living it now they'll live it tonight at the congress theater but you found it as your way to be different and then it went away uh did it go away yeah it went away and because it just never it uh it kind of fed upon itself you know um the record started sounding is sounding the same and if you didn't if you couldn't sing you kind of became a freestyle singer you know and unfortunately that's just you know that's what they said but uh you know then all of a sudden carlos Spiros comes over this great song called uh, uh together forever with the set melendez and you know then now there's 37,000 uh copycats you know that from that song you know now everything's got planet rock I and mean, there's just different genres and there's it's not a lot of uh you know you, you know what i'm saying there's like three different kinds there's the planet rock there's the Carlos Burios beat, and then there's the, the straight up freestyle, kind of like a sapphire kind of thing happening, you know? So it's kind of an it's kind of an interesting story that you tell. Yeah, nobody knows the background of Tim Spin and Schomer. It'd be nice to know. Um, I fell in the freestyle when I started the WCYC because at the time Kenny Jason was a program director. I was an outsider. Mm -hmm. I was working for the guy that ran the station, doing office stuff. I was just out of broadcasting school. They used to lock up all the house music carts. Everything, <laughs> all the music was there because I ran a program on Saturday. Don't let the guy play it. He's not one of us. And so then me and Tony. Boom Boom Badea were working together, so I started pulling stuff out of his crate and playing it on Saturdays because they couldn't have access to House Nation. Eight minutes of House Nation, but it was still House Nation. And then eventually Kenny named me as program director, and I started, you know, phasing out the, the house music with the freestyle. And, and in, in your story is similar in that you found the style of music that, that Billy and Julian were not necessarily playing. Well, Did you fall into it? Wasn't they weren't they, they were playing it, but they weren't full on, you know, uh, you know, they weren't embracing it the way uh, the way everybody else you know that that I was, you know, I was like, man, this is, I'm going to take this over. Now, now, were you a fan of the music, or did absolutely, you just... Absolutely, absolutely I was a fan of the music. Uh, you know, Taylor Dane, and when I, the first time I heard uh, um, Point of No Return by Expose, or even, uh, uh, you know, Let the Music Play by Shannon, and uh, the Xena record on the upside, I could keep going, and, you know, and these are the records that, you know, that made me crazy. I go, man, I love this, I love this sound, the Chris Barbosa sound, the, the uh, Lagosa sound, and the Energy records, and, and I'm like, man, this is, and then, you know, he, Point in the return and uh, and exposed to love and these some of these records were like gold you know and uh, even like Information Society running and this, this is a whole era what is that 1984? Wait right, now were you one of these high school DJs that, that was <laughs> spinning records or were you just sitting at home and what 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 is the Tim story that nobody knows because I remember you know having met you but you were always in the background even when you used to visit wcyc and i used to try to get you on the air to talk about freestyle you, you would rather let jj or joel or troy or whoever talk you really you were in the background and then you became a radio guy in your own right but um this was the stuff that, that you learned as a dj because you, you don't fit the, the prototype of the <laughs> dj that would have played it back then would have played it back then because i'm a dancer no you know what i i think um you know I, first of all not in high school i was a little bit out of high school when i was uh well 
I, I mixed at a teen club in Wisconsin, in Madison, Wisconsin, where I grew up, and I uh, was there for a couple of, what year? No, I said hey there. Oh, yeah, 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 hey there. Yeah, thanks. Uh, cheese. And then, um, uh, then I, you know, worked and, and you know, I played, played dance music. I mean, it was, th when I was in high school, I would, they used to have this teen club, and I used to go, and this DJ, I heard these records, and I'm like, man, I gotta get these, I, you know, and I used to have, my collection was better than the, than the clubs, because I used to, you know, every, every waking moment, I would go shopping, or I'd, I'd go mix, or I'd practice, I'd make cassettes, you know, and uh, it was just so much in, into what I was doing. And just the whole dance music scene that was that was going on, and then uh, somebody called me up and said, "Hey, listen, we're opening a club in um, in Chicago. Would you be interested in, in going out and uh, and being a part of that?" And you know, after mixing in a teen club in a, in a bar in Wisconsin, and I, you know, not seeing much of a future, I said, "Yeah, maybe I'll do that." So you know, two weeks later, I'm living in Chicago, and I don't know anybody, you know. And all I knew there was a cool record store called Imports, etc., that I was getting a catalog from, and I said, "I don't know anything about Chicago." They did this before MapQuest. And we're just gonna drive down and see if we can find it. And we were driving to Congress, <laughs> and I go, "Oh my God, there's Plymouth Court!" And that's where the street, the, uh, you know, did one of those Batman turns, and we went, you know, and we found the record store. So I went shopping there, and uh, you know, that's where we found our gold. You know, those record stores, the Gramophone, so, etc. The very first loose touch George Lamont in store was at Imports, etc. Back in '80. Wow. Or so they had done the Aragon Ballroom, you know, for Pinky at the time. It was a Halloween event, and we were driving them around because we were their first interview. They knew nobody. Right. Chris and I hit it off, and we just drove them everywhere and imports, etc. That was their thing. Um, that's one of the things that freestyle has kind of sort of been known for the the relationships between people. You know that everybody sticks together. You know, it's not as much of a doggy -dog, dog world as it is in other genres of music. You know, we're still buddies after who knows how many years. Absolutely, and uh, I think it has to do with the music. It's all love, <laughs> love and crying and feelings. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but uh, yeah, of course, you know, it was, you know, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, I think it's cool. You know, sure, there was a time when doing DJs used to, you know, black and black and out the side of the uh, the 12, and so you'd know, you know, what are you playing? And you know, would hide so nobody could out, nobody else could see. It. But, uh, I mean, things have changed, man. You know, united we stand, divided we fall kind of a deal, you know? Um, before we go, how did Tim Spin and Schomer become this conglomerate that it became? You were Tim. Yeah. A and then it became a B96 thing, and then you became the godfather of freestyle in Chicago. <laughs> and now every event, you know, there you are. You know everybody. You've got your relationships with everybody. When did the boom happen? Um, remember Will from the group Bomb? Yeah. Can you dig it? He, uh... High school teacher now. Yeah, that's what I heard. He, uh, I, I, pay, I wanted him to do some drops for me, and uh, he came into the studio and uh, he goes, "You need something that's gonna, you know." It was all him. I'll give it all, give him all the credit. Boom, you know. And uh, the guys from First Class did the Tim Spin and Showers of the Mix, you know, First Class on uh, my Sweet Sweet Rose, and uh, <clears throat> and everybody asked me about the, the girl too. Tim Spin it. Uh, that was my buddy Rusty's daughter. She was six at the time, and now she's like 20, 26, I think, and she's got a six-year-old of her own. So it's uh, it's crazy the way uh, you know things come around. But you know, the, the, you know, do the freestyle shows. You play the freestyle music um, in Chicago. I, I did a mix show in New York for a, for a long period of time um, on uh, 105.9 Latino Mix. Um, it sounds better when they say it in Spanish, but don't make me do that now. And uh, you know, I've had a quite a run. You know, it's fun. Well, it's pretty neat, and it's been good to have known you through all this time, and you've always been good to the radio station that I was at. Well, whatever station I was at, you were good to, and then you visited the kids at the club, and, he, and even now, when I was having trouble finding out the promoter and who it was, um, Tim comes through, and now we're talking backstage at the Congress, so um, I, I do appreciate everything that you've done for the movement, and I'm glad that this friendship in particular has maintained throughout the years, because it's, it's pretty neat to watch everybody grow, <laughs> and you in particular, because you became a personality in your own right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. The feeling thing is definitely mutual, and uh, you know, we run into each other uh, occasionally. And I, you know, I, I just realized uh, today when you uh, emailed me and said, you know, who's the promoter? I, I realized I didn't have your phone number, so I got your number now. Oh, be before we go, talk about um, whatever you might remember from WCYC. Um, I've been doing interviews like this, and we've been talking about people that have had memories of the station that's no longer with us. And it was kind of a fan that said, well, how come you guys never documented what that little radio station did? You were there, literally this teeny yeah. tiny place that ha that had an impact. But I don't want to tell you what the impact was. Maybe you could tell me you know, how you saw WCYC back in the day. Before we go, talk about... um. 
whatever you might remember from WCYC. Um, I've been doing interviews like this, and we've been talking about people that have had memories of the station that's no longer with us, and it was kind of a fan that said, well, how come you guys never documented what that little radio station did? You were there, literally this teeny yeah. tiny place that, ha that had an impact, but I don't want to tell you what the impact was. Maybe you could tell me, you know, how you saw WCYC back in the day. You know, uh, wow. A lot of, I mean, everybody's always talking about CYC, and I, I know uh, Candy and Michelle Lay uh, w was there for a long time, and the story that I remember, and is, you probably, I don't, I'm sure you do too, was it was it your birthday or something, and Charlie Baby showed up with a birthday cake, and they and they put it on top of the car, and they forgot it was up there, <laughs> and they drove away, and the cake slid off the car onto the floor. That's an amazing memory, because, yeah. because I mean, for, for that, that was my last broadcast, and yeah. we, had, we had an all-star lineup, including yourself, and you're right, my son Charlie gave me a cake, thank Thank you, Harb. We put it on the roof of the car. Me and Tony are driving away. So the car that's ahead of us is honking, and we're honking back, thinking that, you know, it's like a wedding. We're, we're making noise on the street. It turned out they wanted to let us know that the cake was now part of 28th Street. So I never got a part of that cake, and, and that's a very interesting memory that you have, Tim. Yeah, yeah, good times. Yeah, I think I was there with Legacy a couple times, too, and uh, The Force. I think I might have been there with Force. And, oh, it, Eric G., I know I've seen, maybe it's just because I've seen the pictures, but, uh, yeah, a lot of, wow. And I've seen, I've gone uh, on your, uh, uh, on your website, and I've seen all the pictures of, uh, it, it's, it's like a, a history lesson. This is my phone, this is my cell phone ringing. Is that cool? There you go. Well, I'm going to let you take care of your business with Tim. Thanks for sitting down. I know you got to get ready for your show, and I'm going to do the same, but um, first time we've actually did a formal yeah. interview, so um, we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. Thanks again. All right. Thank you for listening to me mumble and stutter. <laughs> Tim's been a showman. <laughs>